we suggest that for most white Christians uh, who refuse to engage in theological discourse about racism and white supremacy, because it challenges the core beliefs about who they are and how they came to be. In our current context, the stain of being labeled as racist lingers, right? Whiteness as an ideology presupposes a kind of virtuous way of being in the world. And so we identified some of those virtues in the white racial frame reading. This is how someone like our current uh, president can say, I'm not a racist, even though he traffics in racism all the time, because to admit doing so, even consciously to, to some folks who might be moderates enough to still vote for him, would be anathema to what it means to actually be a good white person even though he does all these racist things, right? The language of it, admitting it is still contradictory to th this notion of what it means to be white and goes against white virtues. Now, obviously we know this has not historically always been the case. One thing that was not within the reading today, but fits within the purview of Christianity is the idea of the white savior, right? This is not, should be anything new. Much of the history of Euro-American Christianity is built upon the idea that we, quote unquote, must go out into the wilderness to save the savages from themselves, right? This is the way evangelism was built. So in this way, Christian evangelism was blended with the kind of colonial, economic, and political aspirations. This is how white Christian enslavers could say things to slaves about suffering on earth but enjoying heaven or how Christian colonialists could justify kidnapping indigenous children for their mission schools, which operated basically like small plantations, or how a congressman could declare in the defense of the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 that, Chinese, that the Chinese can be allowed into America once they become Christians and are washed white in the blood of Jesus, as actually was pointed out in our chat in a book uh, by Jeanine Hill Fletcher. The white savior complex in this sense is a toxic combination of the desire to help with the simultaneous desire to feel like you are fixing something or making a difference. In this sense, making a difference is still self-focused. The idea that I or we made a difference, right? It is good intentions through a colonial lens. The outcome is still oneself and what the actions do for you while well, those you are helping shift, while well, those you are helping, they, is, they shift from being seen as subjects to being seen as objects. Others are important in that action in as much as they contribute to your self-satisfaction. White savior theology lacks an understanding of how one's positionality influences the theology they develop. This is how you have these clergy who cannot take this stuff seriously when they go to seminary because they don't recognize, right? that their own self-understanding has deeply influenced the theology they develop and the theology they preach. It also limits the understanding of how these theologies may reinforce structural racism and how a lack of deep understanding of what structures need to be attended to in order to solve larger systemic problems, obviously the problem of structural racism. This is why it's critical for, under, for us to understand the ideological dimensions of structural racism and how those ideologies and theologies that emerge, that emerge from them shape us. In our rush to create solutions, in our rush to solve structural issues, we can create unintended problems because we have not done enough self-work to realize how much racism has shaped us. Indeed, we have not done enough self-work to realize how racist we all have been and sometimes still are. And I use we here to be inclusive of all people, not just white folks, but also BIPOC folks as well. Developing solutions without consistent attention to how our racialization shapes us is exactly how the white savior complex operates. To be clear, the white savior complex is not limited to white people, right? This is something, as I was just recently just saying, is impacts all people. This is why Cohn talks about the embracing of a kind of white colonial theology. Like this is not unheard of. If any of you are even generally engaging social media, you can see a kind of evangelical Christianity that is um, 
that it also attracts certain people of color to really be uh, racist and have an internalized kind of racism that harms them and their communities.